I'm sorry for my, yeah. I'm sorry for my English. They're American, I'm Australian. Um, I'm American. I'm sorry for my I'm American. Okay, God so damn it. I think I'm rerunning. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, uh, I read that uh, David and Brad have been attached to this project since many years. So uh, what attracted you and to Kate this project? And Kate and Eric. We were the, kind of the four of us. I yeah. guess Eric first with the script, and Finch jumped in and dragged Kate and I in. Mm. But they only had three chairs, to, so you yeah. had to choose. Yeah, and Eric's a little irascible. Mm -hmm. so, so what attra attracted you to this project? Uh, truthfully, it was the company I was keeping. It was, it was these fine people here to my left. Because, look, you can have the best story in the world, but if it's not, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, how, it's who's looking at it, the prism through which the story is told, and that's, you know, David's skewed perspe perspective on the universe that makes this film, you know, uh, what it is. It, it's it not is so true. skewed. It's Isn't all it? about storytelling yeah. and who's, <laughs> you know, uh, looking for that strong storyteller with a, with a strong point of view. And mm. it's definitely strong. Mm. It definitely has a point of view. How could you define this, uh, this story? Because it's a very unusual story and very unusual movie. So how could you describe it? Well, how could you describe the story? Oh, you know, it's an odd thing because we, I have these um, arguments all the time with people who try to make television commercials for the for the film, because I've been on this project since 2001, and and I still can't tell you what this I can't tell you what this movie is in 30 seconds or less. Um, so I think it's a story of a of it's a story of a man and his love for a woman, and and how they. Um, how they choose to be together um, over time. Mm -hmm. So beyond the appearance of the character, uh, for me it's a very uh, internal character. I mean, it's a very uh, interior uh, psychological character. So how did you approach this aspect of this work, I mean, the internal emotional evolution of Benjamin? Well, you know, each one works as kind of a milestone in an individual's life. Not, not that it, it's grand in any way. It's actually more mundane uh, on the outside. But um, it was, you know, the success of the, the film, what I'm really drawn to is its accumulative effect, as when you look back on, on your life or an individual's life. And it was the, the, the addition of these, hmm. these sequences together that, that, um, that speaks to the, the universality of, of of all of us, you know, that 95% that unites us, that is, is our loves and our losses and that, that uh, inevitable land we must, we must all deal with. Mm -hmm. Kate, uh, how did you approach this character? I mean, is there a character, a very strong character driven by emotions? So how did you create Daisy? Uh, I s well, I th it was interesting, there's a parallel process of, because um, we, we were involved with the, um, with the prosthetics very early on in the, in the rehearsal process. So we'd spend, you know, two or three hours around the table talking about the script, talking about the scene, mm -hmm. you know, t sort of teasing it apart with, with Eric Roth, who mm -hmm. was a screenwriter, in, which was incredibly useful in saying, you know, I'm not sure about this bit, what, why is this scene in here? And, and also there's a series of very short scenes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's very few long scenes between Daisy and Benjamin, and that's a challenge in and of itself. So that you had that sort of structural intellectual process. And then we'd leave the table and we'd, we'd sit in the makeup chair and we'd have prosthetic pieces placed on and then we'd put in front of the camera so that we were, you know, could experience and see what worked on our faces. And then we were scanned within an inch of our lives. <laughs> so, uh, a and then of course, uh, you know, with the costume fittings, that's another kind of rehearsal process again, getting into all these, um, Claire McArdle, who was a, a, a designer who used a lot of ballet outfits. I talked to Jacqueline West a lot about Tanakul Leclerc and Balanchine uh, and what was going on in the dance world. So it was, um, and then I, I, I had to have, you know, dance lessons because obviously she, you know, mm -hmm. big part of Daisy's life was dance. So there were a lot of different threads moving simultaneously. Um, a bit like life, uh, really. I thought the dialect also. Mm. Things. Yeah, that's true. So there's kind of a, a, a languid lyrical quality that, mm. that, that added to it as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a basic question, but how is it to see yourself uh, hold? I mean, it's a, it's a shock. I mean, we get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. I was surprisingly um, 
uneventful. I mean, more interesting than uh, than frightening, I guess, like one would assume. It was the reactions of other people that was like <laughs> I had this moment where <laughs> I was I went to um, I'd, I'd, I'd shot with Steven Spielberg on an Indiana Jones film, and um, and that had finished up, and I'd, I'd finished up on the bulk of Benjamin Button, and then they were finishing the Indiana Jones film while we were coming back to do the old lady section of this. And so I snuck around to see Stephen in my, in my hospital gown as an 86-year-old. And I, I said, Stephen! <laughs> and I came towards him, and you could see him look towards his assistant saying, get this mad old woman away from me. And he <laughs> thought I was from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> it was my dying wish to meet Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and so watching, he, he knew, no, all, uh, he, all he could see was this crazy old lady with no underpants on coming, to, <laughs> coming towards him. <laughs> And it was Dear then God. that I knew just to the <laughs> naked eye just how believable it was. And I, w I went up to him and said, Stephen, it's me, in my normal voice. And he went, oh, oh. And he still, didn't, he, he still couldn't buy that, uh -huh. that there was a young person behind uh -huh. that. So uh, that was very, you know, it was a very powerful testament to, to the work that the guys were doing. Brad, did you have a strange reaction like this? No, not really. In fact, I was surprised. My kids came on set, and they, they, it's like they didn't e even acknowledge it. It, it's, it says something, I guess, to how they they see you. They w they weren't uh, thrown by it. In fact, didn't even comment on it. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. Are you afraid of getting old, all of you? I mean, I say so. Bring it on. You know, <laughs> it, uh, I'm more worried about how I go out. You know, like fire doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> A shark kind of <laughs> is entertaining. Um, but but. Uh, you know, it's, I, it's, uh, the bigger focus is what are you going to do with whatever time you have left, mm -hmm. whether you're halfway through or, you know, you got a couple days left. It's mm -hmm. so abstract, though. I mean, if you think about people say, you know, before they've had uh, children, I, you know, I don't know how, how it's going to be having a child, but it takes nine months mm -hmm. to, to, you know, that's t to get there. And by the time you've reached the, the end of the the ninth month, you are so ready for that baby to be out. And I'm hoping by the time, you know, I, if I do g have the chance to be 86, that I'm actually ready to go. Uh -huh. I mean, that's a good, like, mm. that saying. It's a, you know. Benjamin, learn something. Who messed up his microphone? Oh, just because, oh, that's all right. Uh, that's that, it was just working. <laughs> Clean up the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, saw you, I saw you folding it up to set it neatly, but and I was just like, it's about five, four, <laughs> three, <laughs> two. So, oh. Benjamin learns something from each character he meets. So, what uh, does he learn from Daisy? Yes, but we don't. We you know we don't want to call it a learning film. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, just nothing would drive me away quicker. And it, it's not. It's subtle. It's again. It's the cumulative effect. And and. And, um, you know, I, I think he and Daisy for each other, are, um, you know, they keep, they're, they're one's ready at one point and it's not the time for the other one, so that one's dealing with that failure and then another one's ready and it works conversely. Mm -hmm. And then finally they get to this moment where, where there's an age of understanding and an age of reasoning and they've both experienced, mm -hmm. you know, loss and to some degree and, um, and this is a time they could be together. So it speaks to the... And then there's a time where they have to part, mm -hmm. which is true for all of us, for mm -hmm. whatever the circumstance may be. So it speaks to um, that time you do get to spend together, and that and that eventually, it, it, like it, like all, all things, it will have to end. But it I think it also speaks to that uh, something Kate was talking about earlier is the uh, is is the 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 risk, and that is you know the greater the love, the greater the loss, and, mm -hmm. and that's that's. That's what that is for me. Mark Twain said that uh, it's a pity the best part of life comes at the beginning and the worst part at the end. So what do you think of that? And do you think that maybe everybody should live like uh, Benjamin in the film? I, 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 hope, I hope that people will see the... F I hope that the scenes that we've chosen to dramatize those lives begin to show you just how difficult life is and how rewarding life is and how tragic life is and how lovely life is no matter what direction i mean there is a chronolog chronological accumulation of of wisdom and knowledge and experience and all those things and 
And those are things that you have to go through, you know, it, you know, irrespective of the elasticity of one's skin. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that, you know, the hope is that people will, you know, that unlike most, you know, films of the last 20 or 30 years, which are ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances, you have an extraordinary person in, in extremely ordinary circumstances, and we get to visit those those little kind of mundane mm -hmm. signposts of of a life through somebody who's and see it in a different way and hopefully value it all the more. Mm -hmm. This is a very special movie because because it's really good and this is a special movie because it could drive you to to a number of prizes, especially the Academy Awards, the Oscars. Do you think about it or or, or not? W w we are thinking about opening this movie to as the largest number of people who will go see it, and that's really the the that's the task at hand. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm I'm a small part of the film, so I think I can probably be the most objective about it. And I saw it for the first time last night, and I was I utterly forgot that I was in it, and found it completely transportative and um, and emotional and uplifting in a really cathartic way and films like that are incredibly rare so no matter what the time of year is I'm you know I'm really proud to be <laughs> in it <laughs> <laughs> and for you Red uh, I, I'd say the same I mean to me the you know I'm, I'm happy with the, the, the film has achieved and, and it's take it's been a long time getting here especially for the man at the end of the bench and um, <laughs> I think he sculpted something and I and I'm and I mean sculpted something um, really extraordinary that that uh, that I can't quite compare to anything else I've seen and uh, I'm, I'm really really happy to be a part of it thank you very much thank you and great job all right thanks man thanks a lot cool. thank, thank you, you very much.